Hey guys, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. Here I show you how I manage our finances as a family of seven using a zero-based budget and the cash stuffing method. So if this is something you're interested in, please like, subscribe, and follow along. Okay, so we have kind of a mini cash stuffing going on this week because I wanted to put uh, money into our buffer account to replenish what we use to build our chicken coop um, just because get it all balanced out. So we're just doing a kind of a mini stuffing of more of just my wallet, but I did want to go over with you guys how I do our finances. Um, just managing our finances as a, as a large family and how we do it and how what's been working for us for a long time. I'm not a fan, financial advisor by any means. It's just what we do and what works for us. So please excuse my, my handwriting, but this is the best way I could come up to explain it. So we get paid on a bi-weekly pay schedule. And so some months we get paid on... Uh, we get paid three times, sometimes we get paid twice, and it just never really worked out for me to, to do a monthly budget. Um, I've tried, it just doesn't work. Best method for us is a budget by paycheck method, but whatever works for you, the concept is kind of basically the same. But here's what we do for, a, for our bi-weekly paycheck. Okay, so I wanted to kind of break down our bank accounts that we do have. Um, this is again what works for us. So we have a savings account that is just an income dump. There's nothing that pulls out of it. We don't have a card. Nothing happens with it. It's just where income dumps into. And this is from any source that we get any money coming in. It goes to here. And that from there is when it needs, it's, that's pretty much a needs to be organized money. And so once it's in there, we have a checking account that is labeled monthly bills. All of our monthly bills are auto pay, or not all of them are auto pay, but the ones that are on auto pay are, um, are linked to this bank account. And the ones that are not on auto pay that I prefer to use the debit card, I have a specific debit card just for this account, and it is only used for bills. So my husband and I, the way our household works, I manage the, the finances. I pay the bills. He knows what bills we have. He knows if something was to happen to me, how to run the household just fine. He knows where everything's at. He knows how much money we have. We talk about our finances regularly. And um, so, but I genuinely handle the finances. So monthly bills, I have the debit card that is attached to this account and I just use it to pay bills online and that includes uh, medical bills, anything that's coming out of our checking account that is technically what we consider a bill. And so it, it will go into here. Next is our another checking account that's um, called our buffer. And so this is a set amount of money that we saved up over time to just kind of float around in here for any online spending or any overspending that we do that wasn't available in the envelopes but it needed to be purchased or spent and so here's a buffer and then we'll over time we'll pay it back um, essentially it's kind of like a credit card in cash so that's what kind of works for us so savings account income dump monthly bills and then a buffer and then next we have our high yield savings account um, i have both Ally and Capital One. I do like both Ally. I don't like how it takes a while to for us to get our money. Um, transferring money to them is fairly quick, but getting money out to us into our regular bank account takes a minute. I do have a debit card that's attached to the high yield savings account checking. And so that's helpful, but um, the Capital One, I, I do like as well. It's, it's fairly easy, but I like the buckets. I just like them both, so either one I'd recommend. And then last, we have investment accounts that we, what we choose to invest in and split our money up into. So these are kind of like our basic um, setup on our bank accounts. Okay, so these are, here, let me set this aside. So what 
comes out first. So we have, as far as our accounts go, savings, like I said, is just an income dump. Everything goes in here and then it's organized. The first thing that our money is organized into is bills. We have to pay our bills. Uh, we don't want to get behind on anything. We don't want anything to be a surprise that it comes up. We know when it's coming out and how much is coming out. So I write all of our bills down and how much is planned, how much is budgeted. And I pretty much, ha I'm like a control freak on what we pay and how much we pay of what. And if my, if someone was to ask me, what do you pay on this? I could, I could just about answer them immediately because that's how much I micromanage our bank accounts. So our checking is our, the one that's our monthly bills is broken down like this. So so let's just, just hy hypothetically speaking, these numbers are not accurate as to what our budget is. Um, my husband and I are just not really not comfortable sharing our exact income on the internet. So this is just kind of an example, but so what we do is our, say our bills total to $3,000 per month. And this is mortgage, utilities, um, minimal payments on any debt, uh, anything that we consider a bill to us, a medical bill, um, subscription, monthly subscriptions, um, tuitions of any sort, anything that's considered to us a bill because it needs to be drafted and with a due date, basically. And so everything for us, let's just say that it totals $3,000 per month. But like I said, our way we handle our finances does not work out if we do it monthly, but we get paid bi-weekly. I just never could figure it out. So what we do is say our $3,000 per month is what we pay in bills. And that's about, and that's on the high end. I take all of, like I said, I write all of our bills down and I get the high end of what those bills can possibly be. And so, um, and then from there, I take those monthly bills and I multiply them by 12 because there's 12 months a year. So that's $36,000 a year is what our money needs to go towards bills. So $36,000 a year for 12 months of bills at $3,000 each month. But we get paid bi-weekly. So we divide 36,000 by 26 weeks because there are 26 pay periods in a year. So 36,000 divided by 12 months. Oh, what am I doing? 36,000 divided by 26 pay periods. And that's 1,384 and some change. So rounded about 1,385 is what we need to send bi-weekly to this account, this checking account. So every time a paycheck drops 30 or sorry, 1,000, $385 of it is going to go in here, no matter what. Um, and this will always roll over for us. It'll roll over because on summer months, the electric bill is going to be higher with um, the AC running. It's going to be higher in the in the winter time because the heater's running our water can our water consumption can fluctuate if we're having a inflatable watering the grass more anything can kind of, any of those that can kind of fluctuate and if your like insurance goes up unexpectedly by a few dollars we have a buffer in there that kind of just floats around i've as long as we've been doing this it's never gotten too high to where I'm like, oh my gosh, we have like several hundred extra dollars in here. It's never really happened. It always balances out. We come along to winter time and the heating bill is up and it it's there and it's ready for us. Um, so it's always worked out for us. There has been a time where it looks like it's gonna be running a little low, but it it always balances out because we we budget on the high end of our bills. So like I said, this will work out to where every paycheck, this much amount will go towards this checking account. If we're, if I wanted to do a weekly moving of the of the money, it'd be this much that would go, but I prefer to do it bi-weekly. Just get it in there, out of sight, out of mind. It's in the bills and um, they're waiting. It's waiting to be auto draft or that if I'm paying something on the debit card. So, 
Also, we do add like in here, what we would do was add minimum debt payments because technically to us, those were a bill. They have a due date on them and a minimum has to be met or we are in trouble basically. So minimum payments are all in there. And then auto draft is kind of our best friend with the majority of them, like insurances and um, our mortgage and stuff like that is auto paid but the bills that I do like to pay attention to like our electric bill water bills stuff that if it looks too high I want to investigate and I don't want it to draft out of our account prior to me looking at it first so so some of the bills I don't allow them to auto draft but this is just again me being micromanaging on with our bills so um, so this kind of breaks down how we do our bills. Okay. So the next thing that we do after the bill, after the money is moved into the bills account, there's money left over in the account, in the income dump. So now it's broken down into what we want to put into our cash envelope. So basically this is the fun part. We organize our money into categories, right? Um, everyone essentially has a budget. Millionaires have budgets. Billionaires have budgets. It's just different than you and I, normal people. And so we get to organize our money into categories. So the first category is going to be our high and low priorities. Um, these are medical, dental, anything that you, you know you're going to need to pay for and it has to be done. It's going to come up car maintenance. You own a car, you're going to have to maintenance that thing. Um, your children's schooling, you're going to have stuff that's going to come up that you have to pay for their schooling. Um, so all that stuff, you have priorities. Some are on the top end of that priority list and some are on the low end to where they're important to you. But if you don't have enough money, you will survive. You just got to maybe got to catch up a little bit. So that's number one. And then number two, future expenses. So stuff that you know that's gonna come up in the future. Holidays, they are no surprise. They come around the same time every year. Birthdays, same time every year. We're gonna need to buy a new car eventually, right? And so it needs to be saved up on. Um, and so future expenses, when you're gonna need to pay your CPA for if you have your taxes done. All these things are going to happen in the future and they can be saved for. And the rest is kind of just fun money. So, but but you still have to budget. The, all these things need to be assigned. And so fun money, um, outdoor activities, hiking, you know, stuff that you know you're gonna spend money on and it's going to come up at some point, not because it has to, but because you want it to. So organize, save for it. And focus on the categories where overspending occurs most. So for us, we our priorities is groceries right so food for our family but we tend to overspend in that category a lot that's probably the one that we overspend in the most so it needs to be budgeted right like it it needs to have an allotted amount that makes sense so be realistic if a family of our size I, if $150 is what I stuffed last week and that was not enough to get a lot of what we want, but it was enough to just cover the basics, um, get our meals done for the, for di breakfast, lunch, and dinner and to move on and not have a whole lot of like little things to snack on around the house. But you need to be realistic. If you're, if you own three cars, you can't save $10 a month for car maintenance. I mean that's just not realistic you need to you need to save more and have it fall into a more of a realistic amount of money for when that expense does come around because when it does come around that money is due then and there and if you don't have it because you weren't realistically saving the correct amount of money to build up to get there that's when you have more chances of turning towards debt to pay for that so again cash envelopes Focus on the categories that you overspend the most and how you want to have what you want to have available. Be realistic on how much you stuff in there and make priorities and work your way down. So that's what we do with number 
two. So again, we have our savings account, income dump, money gets pulled out for our monthly bills. The money that's left over is organized. And the next thing on the next step is to separate it into our cash envelopes. And this can be a specific amount depending on what they need and what our what is coming up in the future that we need to save for. Okay. And so this one here is what's next. So this is kind of just an example of what I mean. So say our paycheck is $5,000 bi-weekly. So after this $5,000 drops, it goes to three different areas. Our monthly bills is number one. And then number two, we stuff our, we figure out how much we're gonna take out for the cash envelopes. And then, the, and then there's money left over. And then we send some off to investments. And this can be any investing that you choose and so all once all these three categories are met, our monthly bills are paid, we have money to spend on things that are needing to be spent on eventually um, or within the within the short term or long term. And then investments that we f want to invest in. After everything is already assigned in these three categories, the rest of it that's left over in our bank account is whatever we want. Um, if I want to go and buy me a purse, if my husband wants to go and buy him a new TV for his man cave and we haven't necessarily saved up for it as far as like new tech goes, but he wants it and all of our basics aren't, I mean, basics are met as, and some are met and our investments are taken care of, our children are taken care of, saved for, then it's kind of like a why not in our case, but this isn't always the case for everybody and that's fine most people do put all of their money into these three categories. We usually like to leave a little bit left over and this can either go into our savings account, it can go towards something that we've been wanting to buy, renovations, um, travel, it just kind of depends on what we want to do with it. But this is kind of how our breakdown happens and then once this is done, we you know, hang out until the next paycheck and then the process starts all over again. And so the best example that I could write out, and again, excuse the craziness, is say, okay, we had a $5,000 check bi-weekly minus 1385 for the bills, um, 300 or 3100 oh my gosh, $3,615 is what's left over. So from there, we took out $2,000 and stuffed it into our thinking, um, I'm sorry, our cash envelope system. And this is just money that we looked through, said, okay, we need this for this envelope, we need this for that, we have this to give, we don't have that. And so we came up with, this is the amount that's gonna go in there. So once that's pulled, say we have $1,615 left. And from there, my husband and I look at it and like, okay, we wanna send $1,000 towards investments. And um, so we'll take that out, send it towards our investments, and we have $615. And this $615 is, like I said, left over. It can go into a high yield savings account that is just sitting there accumulating until we find something that we want to do with it. Or it can just sit there and maybe once it reaches a certain, another point, we can reorganize it. Maybe to bu beef up our emergency fund. Maybe we want to start a boat fund or a new car fund. Anything that we can see that this will be fit. But we just, this is amount of money that we didn't find in our budget for this pay period that we needed to assign. It's just left over, but it still needs a job. So it, it will go and it'll collect interest. So that's basically how our um, our budgeting days work. When our paycheck drops, that's the, that's the process that goes on. So I will give a little tour of our um, envelopes and that way we, you kind of get an idea of what we save for, for our family, what's important if you guys have any ideas on things that would be a good idea for us to save for as well, then I'm all ears, but let's, so let's do my wallet. For right now, I did go shopping and I have been having our groceries delivered. And because we live out in the country, the people that deliver our stuff, 
I don't know about them anymore. And it's just gotten to where it's a problem. I feel like I'm on the complaint line more than anything anymore. So we've just been going into the store, which I really prefer to have our groceries ordered online, but it helps me stay in budget. But this is just how I have to do it. So anyways, my a lot of our shopping envelopes are in here for right now, but I need to figure out another, figure out another system. Okay, so groceries, of course, explanatory. This is what we use to buy our food. And so especially when you have a very large family, meal planning has been our best friend. And food is so easy to overspend on. And if you're not careful, not only will you overspend, but you can, it can lead to more waste, food waste. So having a plan, we I plan out breakfast, lunch, and dinner for my children. And it may sound crazy, but that is literally the only way that we were able to basically cut our grocery bill in half. And it, my kids, it's a system that they've been used to for several years now. They really don't know any other way than a plan for daily meals. So, and it's helped us so much to stay in budget. So groceries here gas i'm i was using the upside but just to stay away from the credit card and i don't like random expenses being pulled from the debit card that are not um how do i say like i want to go to the gas pump and know that i only have 50 dollars in here so all i'm putting in my truck is 50 dollars versus standing there at the gas pump trying to eyeball it and like oh my gosh I don't know how much I have, but I'm gonna hope it's like at least 50. So carrying the cash. Household, um, this is for anything that has to do like with our home, um, toiletries, like um, toilet paper, paper towel. Oh, I'm gonna buy paper towel. I'm trying to look around and think. Uh, hand soap for bathrooms um, foil plastic or anything that has to do with like just kind of running the household it just comes out of here self-care i am gonna put my personal hygiene one back in here because i was using self-care as far like a broad range of um shampoos lotions massages and anything that kind of fell into that whole self-care category but it's too broad and I don't like it. I like safe, I like it to be more specific. So I'm going to put the personal hygiene one back in here. This one will probably go back in here. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. So um, pet care. This is anything to do with our animals that's not the veterinarian. Uh, food, treats, um, toys, doggy beds, grooming, anything like that will come out of here. And then dining out, it's pretty self-explanatory. So this one, our kiddos envelope is if we're out and about and they ask for something um, or are going somewhere and they just need a few bucks with, to take with them, then it'll come out of this one. But if I wanna take my kids to go get like little Sonic fountain drinks or make them more suckers for McDonald's french fries, ice cream, it'll come out of here. Uh, my spending money, and then I do save to get my nails done. <clears throat> so it comes out of there. This one I did steal from the Aesthetic Dollar. She, one of her videos, she did kind of give like a little challenge to um, just to take opportunity when you feel like someone when you could give something, no matter how small it is, how large it is, just kind of making somebody's day by giving, um, leaving an extra tip or, you know, something. So I went ahead and made this one to have, and I did actually use it. I went and got a coffee and I tipped my barista a little bit and it did feel good. She was right. And it can be addicting. So miscellaneous, I want to pull this one out and put it into another one because I don't like having it in my wallet because I feel like it'll lead me to like knowing there's an extra $5 in here and so I'll spend it, but it needs to go somewhere else. So, but miscellaneous, something that is not budgeted that does come up and I can have a few dollars cash for, like um, something that could come up, postal stamps it came up and I'm like, why do I pull that out? I don't have a stationary. So it came out of miscellaneous, but that is my everyday wallet. 
And then we have short-term sinking funds that we save up for. So these are gonna happen in the near future. It's inevitable, uh, well, most of them, I guess, are inevitable. I don't have a priority versus low priority. I feel like if I'm putting money into an envelope and waiting for it to come up, then it's probably something that's important to us. So I do break mine down into short-term and long-term. But car maintenance is something, we have three vehicles, so maintenance on, our, on them happens all the time. Oil changes, new tires, uh, it rains a lot here, so windshield wipers and um, so I just got my oil change. This had a, way much more money in it, but my oil change from my Tahoe is really expensive. So it's a little depleted, but car maintenance. Um, I'd like to stuff more in here. That way, whenever it rolls around, time to get new tires. Um, we'll have money in here, but for a little bit, it's just been kind of maintaining our oil changes. So clothing, all of all seven of us, pull use this one for our clothing envelope i try to save at least 50 dollars a week we did just go clothes shopping for the kids to get some um, warm weather clothes and so it's depleted as well but 50 dollars a week usually covers it but now that my children are getting older like my two teenagers i swear one pair of shoes costs like 100 bucks minimum and it's crazy um so that one is ever bulking and depleting it feels like um kiddos so this one is different from the kiddos that's in my wallet so the one that's in my wallet is the money that i have right then and there to give them or to buy something for them to treat them with this one is if they're going to do something um that's or something that we want to do for them that's coming up and we need to save for so one thing recently was my children went to camp with all my three older children did camp with the church and it was a few hundred dollars for my older two and then i think like a hundred bucks for my my middle child and so that came out of here that's something that i ha we have to save for they're going to want to do activities my one of my son does taekwondo so his belt test costs like 50 bucks my my daughter does dance so her recitals cost money for the tickets for us to go watch them as well as her costumes so and then if i'm out and i want to buy them like a like my son's really into godzilla and the godzilla movies so when the toys come out we want to go buy them for him and um so this it'll come out of this so that's kind of the kiddos and we'll envelope anything that we buy that or spend money that you know is for them or something that they want to do comes out of here family fun um self-explanatory too if we want to go bowling to a movie theater um an event or something it usually comes out of here chickens we do have chickens right now we have 23 and so their feed and bedding is going to be coming out of here so they needed their own envelope i do have a very large garden i just um we got Pretty, I think I'm pretty much done with building the orchard, um, but and my vegetables are all doing great. Um, so we just need to kind of keep this going. That way when we need fertilizer or anything for starting next growing season, we'll have it available. My husband does have a man cave. So this is, and it's pretty stocked with everything. He has like a sectional couch in there, TV, everything like that. But um, it like a, having like a bar area in there and it's locked off to the children and so like alcoholic beverages that we want to buy um anything he wants to buy for the man cave um, can come out of here so this is just kind of like i have my nails money he has his man cave money aside from our spending money so this is kind of his to buy what he wants with as far as what goes into his man cave Outdoor fun, we bought some tree swings for the kids. Um, they have a volleyball net, trampoline, a whole baseball diamond set up out there. So this use, this funds that kind of stuff. Mine and my husband's date nights. We just recently went on a date and it was really great. And I think my dog needs to go outside. What's the matter, Melody? It's okay. Hold on. 
And so this is for date nights. Enrichment, this is for anything that doesn't have to, that has to do with homeschooling, but except their curriculum. Their curriculum I save up as far as in our long-term sinking funds. But if I want to get them books or any kind of art supplies, um, anything to help with their schooling at home comes out of here. We go to a museum, um, anything like that. So it'll come out of there. New tech, um, you're gonna have to buy a cell phone. Unfortunately, they're, they don't last forever. And you're gonna have to buy one. We're, we have cell phones, we have televisions, we have AirPods, we have, I have a MacBook, we have electronics here. Even though we, we pretty much stay electronic free, minus my and my husband's cell phone for during weekdays, um, we, you, new tech's gonna come up. And so that's what we save for. And here, so travel. So this is not technically if, you know, if we were gonna do a big travel um, adventure, this isn't gonna fund that. If we plan something because we are such a large family, it's not gonna be a spontaneous thing. It's something we're gonna have to plan for well in advance. So this, and, and it's gonna be a fund that's set up all on its own. But this is something that we are a couple hours from the beach. We're a couple hours from the mountains in the other direction, um, large cities. And if we want to just go on like a, a day trip or, you know, something like that, then we want to have money in here available for that. So if we decide we want to go on a beach day, then this will help cover anything if we want to eat out while we're there or gas money to get there if we do end up having to stay overnight just because we got a little too much sun and don't want to do the drive back then we have some bills in here for that so like i said it's not this is not going to fund what is this 30 dollars it's not going to fund us going to disney or anything but this is will help us if we want to go anywhere close by so that's our short term, our long term sinking funds. So I used to have medical, dental, and vision, but I just combined them all into one and just called it health. Um, we do have prescription medications that we have to get monthly and um, dental appointments as much as I try and try my best to make all of our appointments clumped into one it never fails that someone has to go back for another one and, or somebody's sick and they can't go. So I have to reschedule theirs and then the other four children get to go and it's just a mess. So I just threw it all into one and it's for anything that has to do with health. My husband does a lot with uh, vitamins and supplements. So that comes out of here, um, glasses, contacts, anything that has to do with keeping us healthy comes out of there. Um, medical bills. So what I was saying earlier, if a medical bill comes through, I will come out here and pull this money and place it into the checking account that's labeled monthly bills. That way it's treated like a bill, but it's saved for. Home maintenance, because we are homeowners now, there is some maintenance that comes with it. Um, the water softener, air filters, um, a little here and there's that need to be repaired, having the chimney swept and um, anything like that that has to do with maintaining basically the house itself. We have a different category for other stuff, but the house itself that needs to be made to maintenance regularly, we have um, a maintenance envelope. Locally sourced, so we do outsource a lot of what we eat, um, our meat. We, we do get a cow um, regularly, pig. Um, we, I would like to do chickens, raise our own meat chickens, but we'll see how that goes. Um, milk, is, we have a weekly subscription on our milk for, I, we usually use it more for baking. <laughs> But um, it's anything that we source lo from local farmers. Um, we go to UPICS for strawberries. Um, I get large or multiple bushels of green beans that we freeze to use throughout the year. And um, it just works out for us to go get stuff in bulk that we know that we're gonna eat. And um, so this is what funds this one. Uh, 
farmer's markets comes out of it as well but local like anything that we get local from farmers so livestock and farm animals we are saving up to get goats they probably won't be until next year um if i ever talk my husband into letting me get a cow or two then that would be cool but uh, rabbits just to have more pet wise if we you know we want to build our homestead and but as far as like farm animals uh, barn cats fall into this category if we do end up getting a farm dog then it'll come out of here but those i mean animals are expensive they can be expensive so we need to save up then there's veterinarian all these animals and dogs cat will have veterinarian visits so and if they're expensive so we need to be saved up for so tools and maintenance so this is what we save up to maintain our our property this home maintenance maintains the house tools and maintenance maintains the property so if my husband needs to buy any tools um, for whatever man thing that he's got going on then it'll come out of here a zero turn will come out of here ladders um, equipment to chop down all these trees if need be whatever it needs to be done to maintain our house if we need to do any landscaping doesn't fall into gardening it falls into maintenance so so that's what this will come in play projects um anything we we see as a project if we want to add on to the chicken coop it doesn't necessarily come out of chickens it comes it's a project it, um, redoing the kitchen adding on another bathroom the goat pen anything like that that we have to save up money for because it's going to be a project that needs to get done then this is what that envelope does home furnishings um pretty self-explanatory lamps carpet rugs um chairs anything we want to buy for the house to make it a home and then hopefully we can get a water well soon so we need to start saving up for that i don't really know how much water wells cost these days but <clears throat> i'm sure it's expensive with everything else vehicle repair so <clears throat> this i brought back in i want to save up our deductibles for our um our vehicles i think it's like 250 and we have three so i need to save up the minimum of 750 in here <clears throat> but i want to save up a little bit more that way if something does go out on the car it's technically a repair not a maintenance thing um like if the ac goes out in one of our vehicles it's it needs to be repaired it's not just normal wear and tear something happened <laughs> and it needs to be fixed so we want to have that money available for it Professional fees, my husband has a lot of licensings and um, subscriptions that he has to keep up with. So these come out of here. And our homeschooling, this envelope just covers um, curriculum. We have that enrichment envelope that gets pulled for anything that we wanna buy them that has to um, supplement with our schooling, but this is just funding curriculum. <clears throat> Annual subscriptions, Prime, Sam's, um, our security cameras that we have to save up for. <clears throat> they come around, and then whenever they do come up, they are set to be drafted out of the <clears throat> monthly bills account. So I'll just pull them out of here and move it into that account. And then taxes, this pays our CPA. And it needs to be saved for. We, we know it's gonna come up, and when it does, we're gonna be ready. This one is our holiday sinking funds. They're kind of in order of what's to come next. So we save our Mother's Day. So because we fell behind on it, I'm kind of doing like a snowball method to catch back up on these. So Mother's Day is getting in the most money and then whatever's left over going to Father's Day. And then once one's funded, then we're gonna put all the money into the next one until we're caught up again. So Mother's Day, Father's Day, 4th of July, our anniversary is in October, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then we do, we have stayed on track for Christmas because if you fall behind on Christmas, then it's a, it's really hard to catch back up. So Christmas we have kept up with, New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, and Easter for next 2025, and then birthday parties, we save, we try to save about $50 a week, our birthdays for our family are just 
pretty much scattered. These birthdays cover our five children, my husband and I, and our parents. Everyone else falls into the gift category, but we do save for birthdays. And then donations, these are for um, Christmas time when we encourage our children to participate in um, charities and they, they like going and shopping for other children for gifts and stuff like that. So that's what this saves up for. And then gifts, baby showers, weddings, um, extended families, birthdays. We, we have a gift envelope. And then this one is just the savings challenges from the Aesthetic Dollar. I'm terrible with savings challenges, so I'm hoping to be able to complete this one. So if this video is not too long, I'm going to go ahead and roll into the cash stuffing. Like I said, it's a pretty small cash stuffing because we paid back the money that we spent for our chicken coop. And we, so we just basically stuffed the priority of the wallet and a couple other things. So, which is not a big deal. We don't have anything crazy that we plan on spending. Okay, so I'll be looking at my cash planning sheet from the Aesthetic Dollar. It'll be over here off to the side. And let's start with my wallet. So groceries did not have anything, gas, nothing. Household has a couple dollars. We're going to sweep that. Self-care has a dollar. Pet care has 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I think I'm going to kind of want to leave it here because we need cat litter. And this last time I bought the cheap cat litter and did not like it. So I want to buy the good one. It's a little bit more expensive. So let's, let's say five and we'll roll over nine or save nine, roll over five. And then dining out has nothing, kiddos has nothing, my spending money, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then nails stays in here, kindness and miscellaneous are empty. So groceries is getting 200. I did a 50, 720, so 20, 40, 60, hold on. Maybe there's some, let me get the bad ones out first and then we'll go from there. Okay, so 50, 70, 90, 110, 130, 150, 170, wait, yeah, 190, and then I did two fives. And I've already made my meal plan for next week. Today is Friday and our new week starts on Sunday. So I already have the meal plan for next week. And this will be just, this will be enough. Okay, so 50, 70, 90, 110, 130, 150, 70, 90, 95, 200 for groceries. Okay, gas is getting 60, so it is getting a 20 and four tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. So this is like not my preferred denominations, but um, I went through the drive-thru or the ATM to pull cash because I was not dressed to go inside. I was wearing like biker shorts. And so I had to kind of make change with what we had. So 20, 30, 40, 50, $60. So this is why my denominations are weird. Household is getting 35. So it's getting 20, 30, 35. Self-care is getting 25, but I think I'm gonna split this up anyways. Um, so I wanna bring back my personal hygiene envelope. 
Okay, 25. And then pet care is getting 25. 20, 25, 30. For pet care. Dining out is getting skipped. We don't have any plans to eat out this week. And I know that for sure, I've already made the plan. Kiddos is getting 10, so I'm just gonna do two fives. My children do have their own spending money, so if we are out and they do want something, like my son, my older son, he loves Starbucks, so if we're out and he's like, can we have Starbucks? And he's like, okay, well, are you paying for it? I'm paying for it. Most of the time, he'll pay for it, just because I don't carry enough to get everyone Starbucks. My spending money is getting a 20. Nails is getting 20 as well. So now it has 40. And then kindness is getting a five. And miscellaneous is getting a five as well. Okay, so that takes care of my wallet. Okay. And then we are also giving my husband his $20 for his wallet. And then my children get five, 10, 15, 20, 25. They get $5 each for their um, spending money. So actually I'm gonna throw Scarlett her $5. My two littles, I carry their money with me. Um, just because my daughter's four and my son, he is eight, but he's severely ADHD, so he he won't be. I just don't expect him to keep up with it, and he would be really upset if he lost something. So just to avoid that whole mess, um, I just carry it for him. And my two littles are spenders, so they never have any money left in here. And then my other three children, I'll give them their five and my husband. Okay, so Christmas is getting 60. Never skip out on Christmas. So 20, 40, and 60 here. Okay, so we have 500, 600, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80. So six. 80 so far for Christmas. Okay, and then Mother's Day is getting 40. So 20, 30, and 40. So 51, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80. So 180. I think we have a couple more weeks of saving 40 and we should be good and we could start going on to Father's Day. Okay, so that's that. Let's put this money into these saving challenges. We have 10. So 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I'm gonna put this one in the back. It's ugly. Okay, so there is that. And then the $5, we have one to put in here. Okay. And then we have our first $10 put in here. Okay. 
I don't know if I'll ever be able to put a 20 in here. Be cool if it happened though. Okay, so that is that. I hope you guys made it to the end of this extremely long video, but I did just wanna kinda of give a breakdown of our process, how I actually do behind the scenes manage our finances as a large family and um, the process that we go through, the, what our envelopes are all about and just a little mini cash stuffing. So hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know in the comments, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.